speak for Senator Grace Hall. Bye-bye. And the Humphrey is now confused. I may look like a lawyer, but I'm not. Anyway, uh, Brother Ray Sublido, President of the De La Salle University System, Boy Kalao, uh, Dr. Ben Tihante, Chief Igoro, students, professors, members of the De La Salle community, good morning to all of you. I'm the first speaker, but there is a saying that the first will not be the last. And I assure you, after the counting, Grace Paul will not be the last. <coughs> I'm Paul Poy de Rosario, <coughs> a Lasallian, <coughs> a Lasallian through and through. I studied here in grade school, high school, and college. And I believe in the ideals of the Lasallian community faith, service, and communion, and this is precisely the reason why I have chosen Grace Paul as my candidate for to be the next president of the Republic of the Philippines. Before I present to you the platform and the main focus of Senator Grace Paul, if she is elected as president. Let me first share with all of you an item which I saw in our High School 65 website. And uh, this came from a supporter of another presidential candidate. And he mentioned that when Grace Paul won the resounding 9 to 6 Supreme Court decision, that Grace Paul is an inexperienced American. Okay, let me say something first about the first point, inexperience. You know, in a recent uh, Harvard Business Review article, uh, it, it mentions that in, inexperience cannot be equated to ineptitude. Because inexperience some, sometimes brings with it freshness, innovation, and freedom from the old way of doing things, old way which are corrupt, which are ineffective, and which are inefficient. And freedom from the very important point, freedom from political patronage. So as you can see, there are advantages uh, connected with being inexperienced. American, I think, Supreme Court has already decided on that with a 9 to 6 decision. It has decided that Grace Paul is now qualified to run as President of the Republic of the Philippines. <coughs> and we all know that she has relocated back here. She has sold all her American assets. And even at this point, members of her family, her husband and children, are now undergoing the process of becoming Filipino citizens as well. Okay, let me now go up to the main point of President uh, Paul's uh, focus and platform of government. First, let me share with you uh, a recent uh, speech which Grace Paul gave to the Management Association of the Philippines and the Makati Business Club. Let me just summarize the main points that she enumerated in her speech. Number one, she, she said that we should win the war against poverty. Number two, as far as the growth strategy of the Philippines is concerned, we should sell to the world rather than just to the domestic market. Number three, we should join free trade blocks that are set up to grant members preferential access to each other's markets to the, to the exclusion of non-members. Number four, the supporting role of government should be to help rather than to hinder, to facilitate business rather than throw obstacles in its path. And this is all connected to MAP's present uh, priority right now, which is to improve the ease of doing business. Number five, uh, this is with regards uh, to converting the mindset of public officials. She was saying that Congress, the, 
the bureaucracy and the courts should all be from the same place. They should all be coordinated and united in what they are all doing. Number six, anyone who wishes to start a business that will employ people should be congratulated and assisted. Number seven, those who choose to invest in this country should have the confidence that the rule of law exists and that the rules will not change midstream or, in, or with each passive administration. Number eight, tax rates should be determined not by the BIR or what they think they need in order to meet their collection targets, but by our economic planners and what they believe is required to be competitive against other investment destinations. Number nine, as far as infrastructure is concerned, we should go all out for infrastructure and turn this place into a world-class investment destination and tourist haven. As you know, the other countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, they are now spending, as far as infrastructure is concerned, 7 to 10 percent of their GNP uh, growth rate. The Philippines at this point is only reaching 5 percent not even 5% of GNP. So we should try to target more than 5% in the coming years. Number 10, we should aim high in order to catch up with our neighbors. Number 11, we should enable businesses to make lots of money, reinvent the profits, reinvest the profits here, create more jobs, and pay more taxes. Number 12, as far as inclusive growth is concerned, health and education are going to be among the key advocacies to promote inclusiveness. And number 13, promoting transparency. We should really push for the Freedom of Information Act to be passed into law. Okay, let, let me now discuss with you the program of government of the political party of Grace Book. The party is known as the Partido Kaling Atuso. As far as the economic agenda is concerned, they aim to reduce our poverty incidence from 25% to at least the 2015 medium term development goal of 16%. They want to ensure that economic growth will happen in a rapid, inclusive, and sustainable manner. The areas that are connected to the economic agenda are as follows. Investment-led growth. They will increase the share of investment to GDP from 20 to 25%. They will address infrastructure backlog. Spend at least 7% of GDP on infrastructure. And they will have a sustainable fiscal policy. They will keep our budget deficit at 2% of GDP and pursue a holistic tax reform program. Again, on economic agenda, they will expand international trade, they will expand the bilateral and multilateral free trade agreements, they will promote science, technology, and innovation, they will increase the share of public spending on science and technology, research and development, to at least 1.5% of GDP. <clears throat> they will also establish the Department of Information and Communication Technology. As you all know, sadly, the Philippines is lagging far behind as far as internet speed is concerned. Okay, on the economic agenda, on the poverty alleviation side, they will focus on enterprise development, uh, support on agriculture, agribusiness, manufacturing and tourism, human development, health and education, political empowerment and participatory development, and also social protection and direct assistance to the poor. Their mission is to create a strong and responsive government, which not only listens to people, but more importantly, acts decisively and immediately in their interests. Okay, before I end, let me just say that the face of Grace Post party, the advisors, the economic advisors, let me not just name a few of them. Ramon Del Rosario, the chairman of Makati Business Club. Uh, 
Bobby De Ocampo, who was the former Secretary of Finance, Shell Habito, the former NETA Secretary, Robin Bernardo, the former uh, Under Secretary of Finance, Rene Valencia, the former head of SSS, Big Noel, the chairman of SGB, myself as former president of TPP and former Under Secretary of the Department of National Defense. We see Grace Poe as the person, the president, who will address major issues confronting our country right now. Issues like traffic, airport, mass transit, transport system, increasing foreign direct investments, <coughs> the FOI, DCIT, tax reform, negative provisions in our constitution, the China situation, Mindanao peace and development, drugs, crime, housing, health, education, and the infrastructure development of our country. They always, and let me go back to what I said before about experience. You know, uh, several of our, or well, some of our candidates, they were given the chance because of their experience to do something for the country. As far as they were given the authority and the power. But uh, as you can see, uh, in some of the areas of weaknesses that I mentioned, uh, especially on traffic, on transportation, the airport, and inclusive growth. Uh, uh, you know, one of our presidential candidates has always been saying that they would give to the poor. But up to now, one of the major problems we set in the country right now is inclusive growth. And we have to give uh, benefit to our existing president. He has really done much as far as corporate governance, uh, we have posted strong economic gains and we have uh, achieved a strong credit rating. So, uh, with that, I just want to say that we believe in Grace Paul, the faces that I mentioned, the advisors. We believe that she can do something for the country. And I hope with my brief presentation today, I was able to convince many of you to also vote for Grace Paul. So, thank you for this invitation. Before coming events, we will again be asked to talk about our economy. Thank you, Popeye. Let's hear it.